I chose to do a fifth year. Well, one, because I, my freshman year, I had to take a whole year off because I had a rotator cuff repair in my shoulder. And my actual senior year, I had a really good, like, I would call it a stepping stone year mm -hmm. of growth. And I don't know, I, I competed bars for the first time. And it, I just felt like me as a person and as an athlete and as a leader in general, it was a great stepping stone year, but it didn't feel like... The, the end, the last. Right, yeah. like you yeah. had more to offer. Yeah, I felt like I had more to learn, and it, there was just something inside of me that was like, your journey here at UCLA is not over yet. And so, I listened to it. Okay, so you have been an athlete that has been through a roller coaster of injuries. Yeah. What has been the biggest thing you've learned from injuries? Hmm, that's a good question. I would say with each injury, like being a different injury, I've learned a different life lesson. I mean, in college, it's a bit different than when you're like younger in club because your yeah. body tends to recover a bit faster. Man. Younger. You bounce back Ooh. quicker. You bounce back that quicker. True. And then you get to college and you're like, oh, it takes a lot more work to get healthy. <laughs> like I got to eat like vegetables now and like get sleep and water, which I don't have. And water. Water. <laughs> What is water? What is water? The tap? <laughs> Kyla Ross refuses to drink tap water. I'm kind of like that too. Me too. Maybe if I don't drink tap water, I could be like Kyla Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Back to your question. <laughs> what I've learned. I don't know. It's like a hard question, but it's a good question. Oh yeah. Is I stumped her. Yeah, you is that your way of swerving the answer? <laughs> no, because as I like talk about college, because I actually have like that health scare. My, mm. my sophomore year, I and I would that. say like coming back from like that health scare, it gave me like a different appreciation for life in general. Beginning of my sophomore year, I woke up on like one morning for practice and I couldn't see. And it wasn't like black, but it was like everything was distorted. And I remember, I remember you paying. Yeah, because you I got like right in my face and I couldn't see people unless they were like right here. And I was sobbing because I thought I had like a brain tumor or because it was so random. It was yeah. scary. I remember you walking into the training room and some, someone was walking with you. My roommate. Yeah, yeah, your roommate. And you were just bawling. I was like, Macy, what's wrong? And you're like, Bang! And I remember like giving you a big hug and you had no idea what was going on. You're like, it's like I see water in my eyes. Like, it, yeah, it was It was weird. so scary. But luckily, like, you know, UCLA has some of the best doctors and so I was able to get in. And they diagnosed me with this rare autoimmune disorder that's only found in Japanese and Hispanic people. That's and crazy. I happen to be part Japanese. They say it was that, I, I mean, autoimmune disorders can be triggered by stress, and I probably was under a lot of stress at the time. <laughs> probably from no sleep. Probably from no sleep. <laughs> and uh, being in preseason, like, yeah. it all adds up and you don't know, and then your body has such a negative reaction to stress. And that's, I guess, another, like, huge life lesson I learned, like, through injuries and just health scares is, like, a lot of it's brought on by stress. Mm -hmm. and, like, stress is so toxic for the body, and I've tried to find, like, organic ways of dealing with that. Yeah. Like, whether that's journaling more, like, I started um, doing bullet journaling. What's and that? It's is that um, where it's the notebook looks like a bunch of dots and you make your yes, own? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I've seen that before. And I'll I have like, to show you my, my bullet journal. Oh, yeah, you should have brought it. Because that's I new. I almost did. Ah, oh, dang it. I almost did. But I, me and Kyla do it. Well, I think Kyla's kind of not, she hasn't kept up with it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, She's I, calling out a lot of like, people. I know. <laughs> tear out the pages and start over. It's January. She goes, yeah. It's, I, don't know. I know Lilia does it. Yeah. Lilia's is Lil pretty. Yes. I love to draw and doodle, and so I like made that into a way that like helped me organize my life. That's cool, mm -hmm. and it's helped a lot. That's really, that's a great answer. I know. I'm glad you figured out like over year, the time, mm -hmm. like especially when you're stressed, it's so hard to figure out what works for you. But once yeah. you find it, it's like wow, I can you know take a deep breath and actually mm -hmm. go back to it. Well, I guess speaking of the bullet journaling and how you dealt with stress, how do you make goals? Because I know you're very goal oriented, mm. so you. Them need too. your goals. That's really good. good question. <laughs> we're, just, we're, we're just we're like you. I love this. <laughs> so when I was a kid, I was probably like not really that self aware of the fact that I functioned really well on like a goal, mm, okay. a specific goal. Right. And I think I figured it out my senior year of high school. Like I that was at the time when I dropped down from elite gymnastics, and I was like, you know, I, I want to win geo nationals. That was like the far goal. Mm -hmm. It's like 
I want to win NCAAs. I want to win nationals with my team. Right. It's like the final goal, the yeah. big goal. And along the way, there I have realized I need to have very small goals, like mm. very specific. Even if it's just, you know what? I'm just going to have a good attitude <laughs> on this specific event today. Right. Nothing else matters. It doesn't matter if I get a correction or anything. I'm going to have a great attitude. Like, it, it, I realized that is how I have to set my goals. Like, I need mm-hmm. to have an end of, like, an end point goal. Right. But I also, every day I go in, I need to have something specific to work for. Like, work looking goals. at your big picture and then yeah. kind of writing down the mm-hmm. little steps along the way. That's super important. I think people miss because yeah. they only think about the big goal and they forget of that, like, having a good attitude, that's an accomplishment for the day. It that's is. a win. It is. And I think my mom, like, and I mean, club gymnastics is very different than college. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think it's just like, when you're with a team setting, it's a lot It's a lot more fun. And so, being in, like, when I was in club, it was very intense, you know, how right. it is. And it was hard for me to go in with like a positive attitude because you know mm. you always want to try to make your coaches proud or yeah. you know whatever but we are we are people trying to chase perfection which is mm. a, it's it's not like another sport and i actually thought of this the other day during an inner squad like all the other athletes at school are like why do you guys always like high five each other after your routines like why? And I was like, like even after you fall, is that probably why they ask? Or I just don't enjoy? know. Like they probably think it, they. I don't know if it, they think it looks cheesy or I don't know what. My reaction, I thought of the best like answer to them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you trying to chase perfection? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna high five each other. <laughs> <laughs> trying to chase perfection is so hard on the brain. Oh yeah. Because it's impossible. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's not possible. We are. A very subjective sport. You uh, people could just not like you. So it's subjective. So true. It's because subjective. Mm-hmm. You could get a ten, and it could not be a ten routine. Like yeah. it'll be a very obvious balance check. We'll just say for on beam, and like yeah. everyone saw it, but they're like, oh, guess the judge is like, lo- yeah, huh? But she did you? Want- I dropped my pen. <laughs> But that's the thing, it's like, you you know, you, you grow up learning, you have to chase perfection, but then, like, high-fiving each other means that you felt perfect. Yeah. Like, you felt like it was good, and that's actually what's more important mm-hmm. than, like, the subjective score. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree with you there. That's yeah. a good answer, Mace. And I learned also that at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is that you're proud of yourself. Yeah. Like, you're proud of what you did, of the work you did. If you made somebody else smile, if you gave someone else a different perspective, like, at the end of the day, it's just you. Look me in the mirror. Did I have a good day? Did I, did I do everything I could do? No? Okay. Well, that's okay. We're not perfect. Yeah. And it's being okay with being imperfect. I think that's a hard so. lesson to learn to give yourself credit because you work so hard and you're always oh. grinding. Yeah. yeah. So and hard. then there, the day, especially like on off days, have you ever oh. felt like on off days and you're like, I should be doing something with my life, but you mm-hmm. need to, you need that rest. And I, I feel like that's been a lesson I've had to learn for myself yes. too. It's just give, like, I've worked so hard. I need this day. Give yourself some credit. Like you've worked super yeah. hard. So that's yeah. It's funny you thing. said that because I actually learned that over the summer. Mm -hmm. I, my roommates will like testify to this, but like (laughs) last year I would be walking around and I'm like, I need to do something. Like I, I, I'm bored. I need to do something. I was like, I'm going to go to Target. (laughs) I spent too much money at Target. (laughs) You don't go to Target with no like list or agenda. I Target and Marshalls and those are two very bad things to go to. Those are terrible stores to go to. I came home with so many candles and they were like, Macy, stop buying candles. And I was like, I can't. (laughs) We need them. (laughs) But like three at a time. <laughs> so fun. It's like you just had to do like you Something. just couldn't sit still. I couldn't sit still. Mm. But like over the summer, I was like, you know what? I don't have to do everything. Yeah. I don't need to be doing something. I am okay with doing nothing. That's yeah. very mature though, especially for someone who needs the goals and stuff. Yes. And I c- c- understand. I understand you. That was me last year too. It was a huge like life realization. Yeah. And it's like you know what? I can I can be okay with resting. That's I'm hilarious. good with it. I'm good with not doing anything. So that was a major life lesson to learn. So Macy's so, so wise, and she says it so poetically.